second time. I called the member for Balna to complete her, which she was interrupted earlier in the day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, um, I gave contributed for two minutes, um, and just to recap those, <laughs> because there was there was a bit of a peanut gallery here at the time as well. Um, just to recap that the Greens are very committed uh, to the safety in our schools. School safety of students and teachers and community and uh, and we certainly uh, you know note that public schools in New South Wales are incredibly safe places and what we say uh, mr. speaker in, in, in opposing this is we say that there just isn't the gap that there isn't the gap that's being suggested uh, so I want to raise that and also talk about resourcing because there's not a lot being said about resourcing. Um, and I did mention, Mr Speaker, that I was, um, back in the day, um, I worked with Margaret Baker in the legal branch of the department on those enrolment procedures which still stand us in great stead today because actually under those procedures uh, and under the current Part 5A, which includes Part 5A of the Education Act, a principal can refuse to enrol a student if they have a history of violence and a risk assessment suggests that there would be significant risk to the health and safety of students and teachers if the student was to be enrolled. Under the current 5A provisions, a principal can also develop strategies to eliminate or minimise that risk or request the student be enrolled in a more appropriate educational setting. Does it sound familiar? Well, it is, because it's actually that kind of provision, those provisions in the new non-attendance directions. It's a doubling up. The other thing to say, uh, Mr Speaker, is that in consulting with the Law Society of New South Wales, the New South Wales Teachers Federation, and quite a lot of principals, um, I am that I'm being told that the, the scenarios that were mentioned by the Assistant Minister and also by the Minister today could easily be addressed with the current Part 5A provisions and the suspension and expulsion procedures. Uh, I'd like to point out that enrolment, uh, some people are talking about well enrolment is prospective enrolment because of course under Part 5A what the big uh, paradigm shift for that was was and we and we learnt from Dover Heights. Um, that terrible, terrible incident of violence there many years ago was that principals didn't have the power to request yep. the Absolutely. records of a student enrolling, and they didn't have the um, capacity to request from police or Department of Family uh, Facts um, and, and a range of stakeholders information about a prospective student. But of course, enrolment under Part 5A. Yes refers to prospective and continuing enrolment. So principals are telling me that they can make those risk assessments at any time under the current legislation. And of course on top of that, as we saw with the case uh, of Dover Heights in the Industrial Relations Commission, uh, the department was fined, one of the highest fines the IRC had ever given. Um, because it, under the work health and safety legislation. Um, so that is another layer that is there that empowers principals to, and it is a very, very strong uh, uh, power under the work health and safety legislation to ensure the safety of teachers and workers and students. So we feel that there is no actual gap under the current Part 5A provisions, information can be sought by the principal across a range of stakeholders, important stakeholders. Currently in Section 26H of the Education Act, the Director General may direct, or the now Secretary, may direct that a student is not to be enrolled at any government school other than a government school that, that they specify, um, if the student is believed on reasonable grounds to constitute a risk to the health or safety of any person, including that student. So given the fact that currently under Part 5A, Section 26H of the Education Act and under the Suspension and Expulsion of School Students Procedures 2011, principals can in effect give non-attendance orders via V, they can suspend or expel or refuse to enrol a student on the grounds that they pose a significant risk. We could not find any substantial reason for the new provision in that all of the matters raised under this new Schedule 1, apart from the review provisions, are already in either current legislation or current guidelines and procedures. We're very concerned, Mr Speaker, that there's no mention of the rights of a child to receive education 
and no mention of how they will be supported to re-enter schooling life and how they are to continue their education whilst the subjects of a non-attendance non order. Now, it's tricky to, to be talking about safety on the one hand and the rights of a child who may have uh, engaged in acts of violence on the other. But we do know that we need to spend resources and time on de-radicalising students, on working with students and with appropriate experts to make sure that they don't end up in the criminal justice system, that they don't end up costing us millions of dollars, let alone the harm that is done to people when students uh, are not basically uh, miss out in those early years. And one of the things that you know that that's been put to me is, well, why did the department? In the deregul, in the de, um, devol devolution agenda, actually get rid of our behaviour itinerant teachers. They were experts in this stuff. We got rid of them. We also got rid of the specialised student welfare consultants in the department. So you know, when we lost 1,100 experts from the field, uh, you know, we are the poorer for it. And I encourage the Minister to go back and have a, uh, have a conversation with principals about what we lost when we lost those experts. It's the same in the disability with, with disability. We lo we have lost that expertise. People with masters, people with PhDs in this subject, in, in these matters. And, and resourcing is really, really important and it's missing from this conversation. Uh, we do commend the Labor amendments. Um, and the Law Society, I'd like to point out that the, the Law Society's contributions were uh, outstanding and that they're very, very grateful um, to, to the uh, Labor and to the, and to the Minister for um, adopting those uh, amendments. Uh, there has been a lack of consultation and that is something that it's hard to understand. Uh, because important stakeholders, you know, getting this right in the first instance, you know, when this is such a big, you know, we don't see changes to the Education Act every day. It's been about 10 years since there's been something so significant. Why not consult very, very broadly uh, to make sure we get it right? Um, principals uh, do suspend without initial interviews. If a, if a student is a, uh, has absconded, there's no requirement that they have to sit them down before they can suspend them. So there seems to be a, a quite a lot of uh, misinformation around this around this legislation. And the examples, and I do repeat, I note that the, um, being interjected, I note that the examples that were given, um, I've been assured by principals that they could actually deal with that. And also um, that, the well, that there were not, were not um, and this is you know, senior officers in the Teachers' Federation that, that have been principals, um, that, that they, they're quite confident that they could um, actually address those issues. One of the things we would have liked to see the minister uh, address is that the, the under this new um, under this new schedule one, students who may receive a non-attendance direction for less than five days have no right of review. We feel that is a complete lack of procedural fairness. Um, there, is, there doesn't seem to be any good reason for that. There are important stakeholders who have not been consulted, including the New South Wales Aboriginal Education Consulting Group. We know that a lot of, that, that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students will be overrepresented in this, in, in this uh, being given non-direction orders, um, and so will vulnerable young people. Um, the key guidelines are missing from the le legislation. We simply don't know until we see the guidelines how this will play out in schools. And as a matter of law, when law legislation affects rights of vulnerable people, and that's children and young people, children and young people with disabilities, children and young people in minority groups, the primary legislation should contain all the, the substantive detail. We oppose the bill.